Live. Good evening, folks. It's 7.30 and we are live. My name is Ross from Act On This, the TV Actors Network. If you're watching this broadcast now, you're probably watching it on our website. It's www.actonthis.tv forward slash live. Tonight, I am joined by one of the most experienced actors I've ever had the privilege of interviewing on one of these broadcasts. You'll know him from all sorts of things. You'll know him as Gavin Strong from Sky One's supermarket comedy Trolley. You'll know him as the evil, sadistic William Herrick from BBC Three's Being Human. He's currently filming alongside Benedict Cumberbatch, um, Hugh Bonneville, Sophie Okonedo, um, in BBC Two's The Hollow Crown. He's got film coming out before Christmas, Nativity 3, Dude, Where's My Donkey? And in the new year, just keeps going in the new year, he's going to be starring in ITV's upcoming hard-hitting drama in the title role of The Lost Honour of Christopher Jeffries. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Mr. Jason Watkins. Jason, welcome. Hello, good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm just happy That's to good. remember all that stuff, Jason. You're that so was very busy. impressive. Thank you. That was, uh, was very complimentary. Honestly, you're so busy. It's literally ridiculous. I'm going, how, do, how am I going to get through this with, uh, without making a mistake? But we did it. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Everybody's watching. I can see the tweets coming through already. Uh, people are live on the site now. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I hope the next hour, maybe an hour and a bit, depending on how long we can keep Jason locked in his shed for, is going to be really, really valuable to uh, you. I am locked. So I can't get out. Oh, are you? <laughs> there you go. My wife. I told your wife not to let you out, not to let you out. Well, I spend a lot of nights in here, you see. Um, I've got used to it. I am locked in the shed quite often. If you're in the doghouse, get in the shed, Jason. Yeah. Crikey. Right, let's just do the formalities then. What's going to happen tonight? This is how it works, Jason. Um, for everyone watching, you're going to be watching this live on our website right now. Just underneath this video is a live Twitter stream. Um, so you'll see what's coming through to our Twitter handle, which is at ActOnThisTV. If you want to tweet Jason a question live, ask anything about his career, your acting career, Anything you think we can help you with tonight, um, you just need to click into that box and just send us a tweet. If you've not got a Twitter account, you needed to get one before tonight, but sign up for one quickly. It's free. Uh, it wasn't the email that you got, though, the confirmation uh, email for tonight, so make sure you are tweeting us. Um, just so we know we're coming through live and loud and clear, um, start tweeting us now. Just let us know that uh, that's happening, and I can check. Um, I'm using a different microphone tonight as well, so let me know if, uh, if that sounds cool. Very it's all right, isn't it? It's very good. Well, I'll I'll talk all about this later on. But um, there's a company called Rode Microphones who do some awesome mics, um, and they're helping us out at the moment with our audio, and we're trying some new kit out. So um, I can give people pointers on that later on if they want to. So start tweeting us now, and um, Jason. Whilst um, people are tweeting us, I mean, I've got so many questions and, and stuff here for you tonight. Uh, we'll just quickly cover because um, at on this we like to give back. We do a charity donation for everybody who takes part in a broadcast. We've got fifty pounds for you to give to a charity of your choice. Um, who's it going to? Uh, well, this is a charity that I'm, I'm very close to, and it's called Slow. Uh, it's called Surviving the Loss of Our World, and it's uh, it's a charity for bereaved parents. And so uh, that's where my money's going. So you can always go through to their website, which is slowgroup.co.uk. Yeah, absolutely. It's a fantastic charity. Do amazing work. If you want to find out more, guys, and you want to support the cause, it's www.slowgroup.co.uk. Um, so let me just check Twitter, make sure people are hearing us, and then we'll um, we'll get cracking, Jason. We'll get stuck in. If I can uh, find my mouse, here we are. Let's have a look. I've got mine. It's got yours. We're all sorted. There you go. Woohoo! It's live, says Lee Petcher. Uh, Archie says, yeah, great great intro as always, Ross. Says, Archie, just make them up every time. Uh, Sasha's here, Tracy's here, Lee's here, yeah, Hello, Margaret's here. Hello, Sasha. Hello, Tracy. Kimberly, Michael, everybody, thanks so much, uh, like I say, for joining us. Um, let's just get stuck in. So whilst people are sending their questions through, I say I've got so many. Um, but what I like to do first, Jason, is different every time, obviously. People's lives are very different when they enter this industry. Uh, let's have a look at how you kind of got yourself into this industry, got your, you know, your, your foot on the ladder. You trained at RADA, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, which yeah. is a bit of a dream for most young actors. Uh, yeah. What was your training like there? And, and genuinely, like, be honest, do you think that that training really set you up for the journey that you've had? Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, I mean, I was. Uh, not, my parents aren't sort of in the business. They haven't got any sort of amazing family sort of uh, circus performer ancestor who was part of the performing <laughs> arts. It was just. Uh, I think I started just at school and just enjoyed plays and um, I enjoyed drama and I, you know, when I went to the cricket, we used to play cricket quite well and I used to imper start impersonating all the players when I was about 16, 17 and I played in the sort of the uh, 
the adult sides, you know, the the, the uh, uh, at about seventeen or eighteen, and I kind of just started in, in, impersonating all the players and the way they walked, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. uh, and then I did A level drama, and you know, I did that, and uh, and then yeah, I got into RAD. I think there's about I think there are about three thousand people auditioned for the twenty five places, so I was wow. very lucky and had. Um, a quite, it was quite a good term. There was Ray Fiennes, Ian Glenn, Imogen Stubbs, uh, Simon Gregor, Neil Dudgeon, Wayne Foskett. Uh, I'm going to miss some out, but some really, really fine actors and very different. And so Ronan Viber. So we were quite a kind of mercurial, sort of quite diverse group. And I did learn a hell of a lot. Yeah, I love the teaching, and I think as a sort of uh, quite probably quite a naive boy from Hounslow. Uh, it was quite an eye opener, and I, I, you know, I ended up sort of reading more books uh, than I did through the whole of my schooling. So my sort of world did open up, and I, because I'm so old, then I was <laughs> I was taught by some rather interesting eccentrics who sort of belonged in the previous century. So, you know, it was a real exotic mix of strange and wonderful teachers, and and also some some great skill, and so. You know, I was lucky to have a very good broad range of training and, you know, what you would call a classical training, although I gravitated toward more towards sort of contemporary work. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, my kind of experience, my experience at drama school was, you know, ab absolutely, you know, it was an amazing experience. But in terms of one thing that, well, the whole reason I set up Acts on this really was because it didn't really teach the business of the business. It taught us all how to act. You know, technically, we were all you know accomplished when we when we graduated. But in terms of the business in, um, particularly TV, because it was yeah. very much theatre based. My uh, my course, um, it really didn't sort of fill that that niche for us at all. So what I found when I left is, you know, I didn't really know anything about agents, didn't know anything about casting directors, didn't really know about auditioning for TV or anything like that. Mm. How was that back when you first started? Well, I think we had we met some agents, we met actors and agents and some casting directors. They came to Rada and, and spoke to us about the business loosely. But you know, we didn't do a lesson in acting for cameras throughout the whole training. Yeah, it was a very yeah. classical approach. So for me, it was really once I started. I think the first time I got in front of a camera was uh, on EastEnders, and I did that. Uh, that was my first time in front of a camera, which I think must have been a couple of years after I left. It's about 87, I think, according yeah. to your IMDb. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ross. That's so kind of you. Just five months. years after I was avoiding, I was going to say, you know, the day of the month and the month. I wasn't going to mention the year, but thank you for doing that. It's all right. Um, a long time ago. And uh, I just remember my first ever note in front of a camera. It was such a, a scene in the market, and I was this sort of uh, yuppie, and I used to drink, you know, Perrier and drive a Porsche. Nice. I had a what was it? I had a sort of scion organizer that was like state of the art at the time. That's how old I am. And um, I, I had to walk down past the market and sort of look at all the traders and you know look a bit sort of vaguely menacing. And uh, and <laughs> it was we got action. And I walked down past this sort of corrugated iron and looked at all these stores and then cut. And then the director came up. I was just expecting some kind of, you know, pearl of wisdom, and he just went, "Yeah, just, 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 just relax, just, just, just relax." So I, I was pretty <laughs> terrified. But you know, I think if I, you know, if I'm talking to young actors now, and I know there's a lot of uh, younger actors watching, uh, some anyway, I hope, is that you do kind of learn it on the hoof, and probably one of the best ways of doing that is to watch people that you're working with, particularly, you know, older actors, you know, just to see what they're doing and how they do it. So, you know, I worked with Sue Johnson quite early on and she just whispered her way through the whole scene. I thought, Boy, I can't hear her, you know. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. Pe some people can overplay that and it's things that are inaudible. Famously last year, you know, there was a production that was supposedly inaudible. But, you know, it, it there was something about, you know, pulling the camera towards you and not pushing it away. For example, um, but essentially, you know, acting is the same in whatever you do in many ways, you know, finding the thoughts, finding the need to speak, all those kinds of things. But but yeah, I learned for TV, I learned sort of on the